Chess gang, what up? Airplane is white today. We're going to play the London system. The classic. Okay. Opponent's thinking hard about it. No big deal. We're going to play bishop f4. Standard opening so far. Nothing crazy. Nothing weird. Yeah, at this point, I can basically kind of blitz out this opening and not have to think twice about it. That probably is my favorite thing about the London system. You basically just play the same opening just about every single game, unless the opponent does some weird stuff. That was actually one of my problems when I first started making these videos, is that I would spend way too much time uh, in the openings. But I think we fixed that problem. Hmm. This is an idea. I think I actually like playing d2 in this case. Hmm. Either bishop e2 or knight d2. I think I'm just going to go knight d2. And then if he doesn't take it, I'm just going to try to kick his bishop. I don't think I have to bring the bishop out yet. I'm actually okay with that. I'm 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 pretty happy with that result. Probably want to get the knight out to e5 at this point. Yeah, I can either go pin his knight or just look for the knight trades here. I think I'm just going to look for the knight trade. I've been having decent success with just recapturing with the pawn here. I don't know. I, I always go back and forth. Um, Like if the opponent takes takes back with the knight here on e5. Maybe honestly I should have pinned his knight first. Maybe that would have been the play. But yeah, I always go back and forth about um, either recapturing with the pawn or the dark square bishop here. Because on one hand, I prefer to keep the pawn structure. Oops. I prefer to keep the pawn structure somewhat sane and not have this floating stack pawn here on e5. Um, but in the same vein, yeah, see, like in this exact scenario, so like in the same vein, taking with the dark square bishop seems pretty good. And then, you know, attacking this knight is good, but he does have the option to run away. Um, and then taking with the knight, taking the knight here doesn't seem like so great now that he can just recapture with this queen. Hmm. I wonder. I have been experimenting with sort of trading off on f4. That has been a little experiment that I've been running. Yeah, I'm really tempted to take the knight just to remove the defender off of h7. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't have to think about this one. I don't want to go back to g3. That's kind of an autopilot London system move that I've kind of been trying to avoid. Um... Yeah, see, that's why I almost kind of wish I would have just pushed with the pawn in this case. I would have forced his knight back. Mm. Maybe I just let him take... I wonder if I just let him take and then I just trade off so my pawn is still going to be attacking the knight afterwards. 
Hmm. Maybe C3 is better here. Lots of ideas here, lots of ideas. I don't want to burn too much time on this move, but I think the engine does recommend uh, just taking the bishop on d6. I think that's the the engine move of choice. And then he'll probably play like b6 afterwards. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of it. Reason being is because I'm... I'm going to have a bishop, and he's not going to have a bishop. So I would rather just be... I'd rather have something that he doesn't, right? I think that's what I want to do. Oh, castle as well. It's a very even game. I'll probably play rookie one next. See if I can try to break open the center a bit here. Maybe c3 is just better. Yeah, so he just goes ahead and uh, hangs a knight, which is good. I think he was looking for the mate, but just kind of failed to recognize this. Oh, what can you do? Happens. Happens to everyone. I don't want to get too comfortable here. Um, I know it seems like I have a huge advantage here. But you never know. I can always just make a mistake and lose the advantage here. I mean, I basically have maiden two here, so... Yeah, I don't think that's the best move. It's a good move in the sense that he blocks in um, the light square bishop from attacking h7 here. But... Everything else considered, it's it's a bad move. I'm almost tempted to go h5 so he can continue to just push his pawns up. Part of me also wants to just trade off. Might just simplify things even more. Yeah, I want to maintain pressure over here on h7. Mm. I think I'm just going to play it safe and fall back. Where do I want to fall back to, though? That's the question. You know, I'm just going to play this really safe. I still want to centralize my rooks because my rooks are in really bad squares. Um, and he he's probably just going to start hurling his pawns sort of down the king king's uh, whatever you call these F, G, and H files. I'll actually let him trade off here. If he wants to push up, I'll just fall back to C2. I figure that. I want to break open the E file. That's kind of why I'm setting up for this. Yeah, he's just going to keep pushing everything, which is fine. Yeah, really nice pawn structure here. He's going to have a hard time getting through this. Yeah, I think he's just going to try to, like, just push everything. <laughs> um, I'm actually okay to probably push b3 at this point. 
Yeah, b3 and just try to break his pawn structure here. Yeah, I'm just going to go for that. Maybe it's better to keep the rooks connected here. I'll be right back. I'm back. What did I miss? Okay. Maybe I just go back this pawn up with the queen here and connect the rooks already. Yeah, I'm just going to back this pawn up. I don't think he has any way to back uh, his pawn up on c3 if he takes there, so... I'm trying not to get too comfortable here. He has like three defenders on b4, so I'm imagining he's going to try to bring this rook over to b7. Yeah, I need to just get this diagonal. That's all I really need. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to start breaking this open. I think it's okay. I think it's perfectly fine to just trade everything here. I do need to be careful if he pushes this pawn, then he recaptures. Um, I think I'm going to go for the break on the E file now. Hmm. Kind of want to put a rook just on the same file as his queen here. Yeah, I want to get this break going so we can just open up this diagonal here so we can just kind of look for some faster moves. If he didn't have his queen protecting here, I'd be more inclined to trade pieces off. I think I'm just going to push up the e pawn and get the bishop a bit more active. I need to be careful if he pushes this pawn here, he's going to attack this queen. He 
Yeah, he'll probably play c3 next. I wonder if it's better to get the rook out. I don't think it's better to get the rook out, actually. Am I really losing anything by taking with the bishop here? I don't think I am. I guess if he goes... No, I want to I wanna, um, maintain protection of this pawn here. I guess I kind of screwed up my pawn structure. Yeah, I knew he was going to play c3. Yeah, I see. I don't really want to lose the protection here. Really tempted to play d3 and just take this pawn. I feel like it'll simplify things a lot. Yeah, if he goes c2, I'll just play rook c1. I'll, I'll go for this pawn here. I think this will force him to push g6. Yeah, I probably should just trade queens off like as soon as possible. That's probably going to be the best thing to do here. I'd be surprised if he doesn't play g6. Okay, so he's going to look for the battery. So he's trying to win a pawn, but he's going to get checked. So I can either go support this. See the the No, even if I play D1 and he pushes the pawn, I can just take. I'm just gonna go for the check. Yeah. Now I have a check this way too. Which I probably wouldn't play, but I don't think it's worth it. Hmm. He actually goes for that. Yeah, so I do have protection there. Maybe I just play D1 here. Hmm. I don't I just don't like the spot for this bishop. I want to keep it. I don't I don't really like this spot for the bishop. I think we just bring it back. If he takes, I'll take whatever. No, they're still fine. We just want a pawn too. I know he'll be winning a pawn here, but Could attack his rook here. He can just fall back though. I do have a check. I think I can win his rook. Let's see if I go check. He'll be forced to play g7. Then I can play h7. He might play. He might play. F8. Did I say 7 or 8? Yeah, I'll play H7. Let's think about this. So H3, he goes G8. H7, he goes F8. Then if I play H8, I should be winning a rook. I'm going to go for it.
I guess he could always block in with the queen too. Actually, if he wants to do that, I'd actually be thrilled about that. Hmm. I guess I could just win. Win a rook, huh? <laughs> I think that's actually going to be better for me. Winning this rook. He doesn't have like any checks this way. Or uh, any mates this way. So I think I'm just going to do that. Yeah, wins a rook, which is really good. Also, f yeah, okay. I was going to say, uh, the next thing I was going to do was basically just offer him the rook on b4. And then I could play something like e8. And then his king would just be cut off and it would be mate. Yeah, so good game. Postin for chess. Appreciate the game. Wow, 90.4. That's um pretty decent. Pretty decent. Looks like he played a blunder. Yeah, the knight move. Knight g4. The game just fell apart for him after that. And then I played pretty decent after that. So... Yeah, but it's a blunder, but, you know, it happens. Happens to everyone. Okay, cool. Let's do the quick game review. Okay, d4, f4, e3, f3. Uh -uh. Looks like bishop e2 was the play here. So 0.56 on the eval bar. I'm just wondering. 0.54. It's about the same, really. Yeah, I really should have pinned his knight here before coming in. That would have been really good. So he probably would have had to bring his queen in to just break this pin here. But even then... Even then, right, this is really good. Yeah, this would have been a really good move. Yeah, I, I should have went for the pin there. Definitely should have went for the pin. Yeah, I don't think he has any way to really stop this. Maybe like bishop d6 probably would have been better here. Right? And then castles just to get rid of the pin. I wonder what the play here is. Uh, bishop takes. That's a misplay, huh? Interesting. Oh, sure. Recapture. Couldn't I just take this pawn and then threaten the queen? So he'd be forced to move his queen here. And then he would probably realistically, what, take the bishop or something, and then I could still hop back here, right? I guess the eval is not that good at this point. Interesting. I'll have to keep some of these ideas in mind. But yeah, definitely the pin here was the play. Just the fact that he got rid of his light square bishop on f3 here meant that he can't protect this knight on c6. So... Okay, yeah, and in this position, yeah, so taking with the pawn is actually better, according to the engine. Yeah. It's interesting that black is actually a little bit better here. Hmm. Like d7. Yeah, so he's forced to hop back here. I could play what? e4. Interesting. I would probably play something like this. He'd fall back and I would just try to maintain the pressure there, maybe. No, I think realistically I'd play... I think I would play e2 realistically. And then castle after that. But anyways, yeah, so I, I, I was really going back and forth in this position here about which piece is better to take with. But... I don't know. I think this game kind of ended up okay. Just seeing how the pawn structure stayed intact. So, 
Yeah, taking the knight there. Yeah, I was also going back and forth here. So why is taking the knight better? Does he just bring his queen out? And then he's like threatening all this stuff here. Yeah, so he's in a bit of a better position here. Hmm. I'll have to remember these ideas. C4. I think I've just decided I'm not playing C4 in the London system. <laughs> At least not before I've castled. It always gets me into trouble because C4, he has the check here and now we're forced to trade queens off. Uh, and if we don't, then he just um, plays that forcing move. So I, I think that's why I'm done playing C4 on one system. I, th I think it's too, it's too above my pay grade, only because C3 defends this king so well. So, actually, I want to see one thing. I've been messing around with the explore button a little bit. Oh, no notable games in this position. Bummer. <laughs> I've been messing around with this explore and just seeing um, what other people play here. Uh, I still need to figure out like sort of the best way to use this. It looks like in this position there's not a move in the database. Uh, what about here though? I wonder. Yeah, I really like this explore thing. Oh, even here. What about Masters games? E6. Oh no, moves to play in this position. Oh, everyone plays C3 in this position. Oh, I guess that's only one move. <laughs> Pretty small sample size there. Anyway, so after Castle, yeah, this was just a hung piece. Looks like E2 was the place to go. I think E2 was better just because it protects the bishop and then uh, keeps the rooks connected as well. Taking was the play. Sure. Okay. Honestly, I don't. I don't think it would have mattered too much. Mm -mm. Falling back to e two. Yeah, I don't know. I I personally like c two. Because it uh, c two is on the same diag as the h uh, seven square, which is sort of the kill zone here. And all decent moves here. Hmm. I know the engine recommends e2, but I figured I was losing my c3 pawn there. Maybe it's fine because he's stacking his pawns and this would have just been really difficult to defend. Like, there's no way he could protect this c pawn at this point, right? Unless he comes in with like some really trick move on like queen a3 or something like that. But even that, that just hangs c4. So. A solid choice. I wonder what it says about e4. Uh, looks like I lost some advantage there. Yeah, moving the rook was not the play here. Yeah, g6, that was what I was recommending to him too. Here he were he was losing a very valuable pawn here, h7. Moving back. Hmm. Moving back to g6. See, the reason why I don't like g6 is because he pushes this pawn and then he has the attack here. I know it's defended here, but um, the only defender for this pawn was this queen. So I wouldn't want to remove the defender from the bishop on g6 by playing queen d4. So I thought this was a viable move just because it still stays on this very valuable diagonal and then it's also protected by the rook and the queen. Yeah, h3 was probably the best move I played this game. Uh, take spotting the rook capture was a bit unintentional. I was imagining him going to g8 here, but let's just see how this would have played out if he went g8. So yeah, then I would have just had, um, I would have had h7. I, I'm pretty sure I was just winning a rook here, no matter what. 
Yeah, I guess the better play for him would have been to go to uh, f7. f8 just seems like a misplay. Oh, right. This rook was defended by the queen. <laughs> big dumb. <laughs> That's my big dumb moment. Either way, I still had g7, and then it would have been really hard for him to come back from here. Honestly, he kind of did me a service by playing h6, huh? And then the rook was just easy to take. Yeah, after this, it, it would have been really hard for him to come back. Honestly, I still think he had a chance uh, in this position. But after the rook was given up, it was all over. I wonder what the eval bar says. So 6.96... 4.7. Yeah, so it's a bit more even in this position. He probably would have taken the pawn. Or I probably would have just taken the pawn. Uh, he probably could have attacked the pawn. Uh, anyways, it would have just been a big old trade fest at this point. So yeah, GG. Costin for chess. Appreciate the game. And uh, thanks guys for watching. And see you in the next one.